Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us again today. I'm Kelly Quinn, an instructor with Paint for the Wild, and I can't wait to share with you some new drawing techniques and critters today. We'll be going over a great white shark, so I'll show you just the simple shapes that it takes to create this complex animal. Starting with an oval and a few triangles, and then a couple cool little extra patterns and techniques in there to create the light in the eye and some of the more defining features that you see in a great white shark. So all you'll need is a number two pencil, just like this guy right here, and a piece of paper and an eraser. And with that, you are all ready to go. So let's hop right into our drawing. The first thing you're going to do whenever you're getting into any kind of drawing, including this one, is give yourself some guidelines. And I recommend using that number two pencil and creating a horizontal line. Just goes along the paper right here. And then also a vertical line intersects at about the midway point. So we're gonna be using these main, this crosshair uh, guide here as our main way to understand where our shark's gonna be and how to start adding in its different features. So the first thing obviously we're gonna do is add in the main body, which is just a torpedo shape. And I'm gonna have the nose pointing on the left side, but if you wanna flip it and have it the other way, just repeat what I'm doing right here. Just flip it around and you're all good to go. All right, just like it was so. And obviously you wanna to come to a point over here. This part of the body will not remain that way. So if you notice that the upper portion right here actually has a bit more than the lower portion, uh, that's all gonna to come together later on, but this is gonna extend out to more of the tail. And this is gonna be where our actual caudal fin goes in. And then we use this like to do our dorsal fin and the head and all that good stuff. So what we're gonna actually do here is we need to have the nose up a bit higher. Let's make sure the nose isn't necessarily perfectly on point right there, maybe a little bit above. Just like that. And just keep in mind, whenever you're doing this, you're gonna wanna draw relatively lightly so you can easily erase like that. All right, awesome. You got your main torpedo shape in, you're already like part of the way there. So the next step, so we're going to add in our dorsal fin, first thing. So if you notice that our midline right here, our mid vertical line that we're using here is further back on the back, do not go by this area right here. You're gonna wanna go forward to about the middle of your shark's body. And that's gonna be the middle of your dorsal fin or the beginning, like the, like, the ridge, the main um, front part of it. It's gonna go ahead, come up, curve down, and come straight back down. So you kind of do this little whoop and then straight down. And sound effects help. So that's just gonna be our starting dorsal fin. We might shift it around a little bit as we get more um, areas in, but that's just so we have a good guiding area. So now we're gonna hop back to the head and great whites, though they are very massive, amazing animals, they have actually a relatively small space that is their actual head area, like where the eye, the cranium, all those things, uh, like where their brain is and all those things. So that's actually kind of just think of like a little cone, like a little candy corn at the very end. Um, sideways, you're gonna put that in and then from the nose, you go down just a tiny bit and then you curve up See, it's like a little smile there. And then you curve back down a little bit like that. You go in just a little bit more. And that's going to be the mouth. You can think of it just as a circle right there, it's like the jaw. And then continue it down. And then the first thing you need to know about great white sharks is their eyes are directly over the jaw. So it's gonna be like right over and almost to the end of the jaw right here. So just go ahead, put a big old circle about, if you had your midline drawn right there, it's about right there on the midline. And you're gonna make another curved area about this big and that's going to encompass the gill area, 
Um, which is going to start about right here in this area. And then it's going to be where our pectoral fin goes down, come back up to dorsal fin, use our dorsal fin as a guide to do the pelvic fin. And then again, the secondary dorsal fin, the anal fin, and then go to the caudal again. So we just kind of do like a little zigzag all the way down our shark, creating uh, the, cre the correct spacing in between all of these different body parts. And we might be slimming down our shark just a tiny bit, and we're going to have to probably add a bit more height to our fin here. We're making a pretty hefty shark, so we got to make sure he has a fin to help uh, balance himself. That will help him do that. All right. So for the gills, usually just kind of kind of do like a little rectangular box. It's like going half in on this side of this curved C line, this curved like kind of ellipse over here, and then half on this side. And that's just giving you a frame of reference for putting in the gills. And they have a pretty large gill area. Now where these last two little gills are is going to be the beginning of your pectoral fin. And the pectoral fin is going to go at a pretty, um, pretty much perfect diagonal line going down, swooping under this main line we use to start our um, his uh, main fin on the back, his dorsal fin. And just think a uh, straight guy diagonal line um, down, and then you're going to go up at an acute angle pretty, pretty harshly. And then again, you're going to swoop over a little bit, creating that little like little point right here and then swoop back almost at a horizontal line. And this actually is a pretty big, pretty big pectoral fin. So go ahead and make sure it's a sizable amount. So it's about the same size as the dorsal fin, maybe even a little bit bigger than the dorsal fin. And now that we have this basic idea where these two fins are in relation, we can actually now start to put in the other fins that are in the back. So first, we're going to kind of refine our shark's body a little bit more and go ahead and bring it almost to a point over here. Think of like a soft, softened edge over here. Think kind of like a squash, like if you were to the body. <laughs> this is the rest of the squash right over here. So, and that's going to just be our guide for when we put our, our uh, caudal fin in. But first, let's put in our pelvic fin. So the pelvic fin is right here. It just to go from the back of the dorsal fin at that same kind of diagonal that we have over here with our pectoral fin and create, you can almost do like a kite, honestly, but just know that it needs to go a little bit more curved than a kite does. Just like that. And then you're going to go up at a diagonal line that makes it almost like a nice V. And then that's going to be that one is, and this one is only slightly, the anal fin is only slightly behind the secondary dorsal fin. And this also is a bit longer right there. All right, and so now we're really getting our great white coming together. All right, so now we got the tail, Length coming out this way. And then the only thing you need to remember about the tail is that it almost aligns up at the same size, but not quite. You're going to be down about like a half an inch from the dorsal fin. Curves out like a nice little rainbow. And just for the basic shape, you just pull it back down, meet your midline a little bit lower. And again, start the bottom part of the caudal fin at the same point. Like that. And you notice that the bottom caudal fin right here does not come out all the way to the same point as the upper portion. And so that's by design. It just like the keel helps them stay balanced on the, ba on the base. And this is more of their power up here. So this is important to make sure to have the correct anatomy with your great white is to have that difference between the upper and lower portions of the caudal fin. And of course, we can't forget to put that little tag in there. So just do a little triangle, pop it in and out and excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and erase our extra lines while we're at it. Go ahead and clear out those guidelines. Did excellent work. All right, all right. 
And if you like to listen to music whenever you're watching any of our videos, if you check out the description below, you'll see a link to our Spotify playlist for Paint for the Wild. So you can listen to some fun, relaxing jams on there. I mean, they're not always relaxing. So a lot of them are actually really upbeat and a lot of fun, but it's a good vibe and we hope that you enjoy it. But if you have your own music and your own vibe that you like to listen to and creating, by all means, please put that on. Music is amazing for just like getting in the zone and just feeling inspired. So we really hope that you utilize multiple forms of art, uh, of art when you're creating uh, another form, form of art. Okay, so now that we have cleaned up some of our lines, we're going to obviously go back in and redefine some of the ones that maybe got a little too erased. All good. There we go. <clears throat> Let me give him a lucky back. I don't like that. And then whenever you're drawing, just always keep in mind, you can always use a paper towel or a little cloth or something like that um, in order to keep your hand from smudging on your drawing. So just keep that in mind whenever you're drawing, sketching, um, and then later on, whenever we graphite this piece in, which is in the following step on the next video, you will now, you will know what you can use in order to keep your piece nice and clean and crisp. So this is the lateral line. Starts at the lower portion of the tail in the middle right here, and then swoops up softly over the gills and almost coming straight to the head over here. But don't okay, you have to take it all the way to the head. It really disappears at about over the gills. Not. Okay, and so that's going to be our lateral line, which we'll use for shading in the next video that's connected at the end of this one. Okay, so then the last thing that we really are going to focus on is the face, the eye, and then putting in our pattern. And then we'll be all ready and set to start the next part of this piece. All right, so while we're still sketching, I was stepped away, which is always a great thing to do, and I highly recommend is stepping away from your drawing or your piece whenever you're working, is I noticed that our snout is actually just a tiny bit too short. So we're just gonna bring that nose down just a little bit, make it a bit more elongated, but still keeping that same kind of rounded U shape at the mouth at the end. I'm going to even bring the nose up a little bit higher to a point. And then when we do that, we're going to have to shift the eye over just a tiny bit. There you go. A lot, a lot better. All right, so now while we're doing this portion of the eye, I'm gonna go ahead and just erase it so I can show you. They have a really big eye, mostly all pupil, but just whenever you're doing this, keep in mind you're gonna to wanna to put in this little bit of space that you're going to leave white. Um, and that's actually really what gives your shark the feeling of being alive and a little bit of light in the eye. Just like so. And I like to put like a slight eyebrow over. And then obviously we can't forget a little nostril area. And then the teeth, obviously are just some little triangles that are gonna show up at the bottom. We don't really focus on putting them in the top jaw because they actually really don't show up from the side. All right, so now that we have that in, I'm gonna zoom out a bit and I'm gonna show you how to do the pattern. Great White's pattern starts 
just or above the little nose, like a little nostril right here, and goes just below the eye, over the mouth, very faintly, between the gills. So it usually comes across on the upper portion of your gills, kind of fades out about right here where the pectoral fin connects to the body, and then comes back up about right here, and again, goes down a little bit by the pelvic fin, and then again, goes back up. So if you see, I'm just kind of doing these little fluffy cloud squiggly things, kind of like that. Um, and that's just because I found that this is the way, it, this is the technique that I use to make the most, makes it look the most like the pattern that I'm going for. And they also tend to have like some little extra white patches kind of popping up into the body. And they also have some dark patches on the belly. So you can add a couple of those, like little circles, just like that. And they'll add some interest for your drawing. And now the last thing I will, I'll, we'll do for the drawing aspect is just add in a little bit of definition into the fence. And this will help us whenever we're filling in with graphite if you choose to in the next video. Also gives you a little bit more sense of form and uh, movement on the shark's body. Like that. And just like that, you have a great white shark. Thank you so much for joining me today to draw this awesome great white shark with me. I am so excited to see the work you've created, so please share your artwork with us with the hashtag of the wild and share it at Paint for the Wild on Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube. We would love to see your work and to share it on our channels as well. If you have any questions about the materials, about the techniques, or the steps, please just give me a timestamp below and we will get back to it as soon as we can with answers to your questions. And if you have any suggestions for future artwork or ideas, we would love to hear it too.